All right. Well, hey, everyone. I want to welcome you to episode 42 of Shred Media's Agent Marketer Podcast. Very excited about today's episode. I'm continuing a trend. Um, as, as you guys all know, uh, uh, the Agent Marketer Podcast is a proud member of the Industry Syndicate. You can check out some more awesome shows at industrysyndicate.com. And so uh, a series that I wanted to do because Really, the syndicate is about bringing the best of the best together in real estate and mortgage, just in the industry together of just awesome content creators. And so I started a series and uh, we called it Meet the Syndicate. I started with Phil Crawford uh, a few ago. I wanted to try to do like one a week and, and mix them in with my regular podcast content. But because all these guys are, are not just sitting around doing podcasts, they're actually you know out there in the trenches doing deals, doing business, uh, which is why I'm excited for my, my guest today because he is doing that and we're gonna find out everything about his business, about his podcast, how it helps him with his real estate business. Uh, but this guy is crushing it and he's from the great white north, our neighbors up top in Canada. And he's just, and he's just you know, holding court up there. So uh, I'd like to introduce uh, Jazz Tekar. And uh, you know, Jazz, introduce yourself and uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, man. Well, first of all, thanks for having me on, Jason. Really appreciate it. Uh, thanks for uh, obviously starting the industry syndicate and having uh, uh, myself on board. It, uh, it's so nice to be part of what I, I think I dubbed it. You, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think I, I dubbed it as the dream team of podcasters. <laughs> I'm not going to argue against that, Jazz. I'm not going to argue against that. Okay, good, good, <laughs> good. Um, because I'm just learning so much. And it's so neat for, for uh, listeners and viewers, because obviously a lot of us have our YouTube channels as well, um, where a listener can go and uh, essentially get so much content from one platform. So again, thank you to you, uh, as well as Dustin and Phil um, and Josh for putting it all together. Um, I, as you mentioned, I'm based out of Canada, uh, Toronto to be specific. I have a, uh, a real estate team here under the Royal LePage umbrella, which is Canada's largest franchise. Uh, it's essentially like your guys KW there. Um, and uh, out of out of 18,000 realtors, my team is number three uh, in all of Canada. We help a little over 650 buyers, sellers, and investors every year. Um, and then I have a team of about 10 support staff that help me from the content media perspective, uh, essentially helping with the podcast that I started about a year ago. Um, and it's uh, REC experience. You can get it on any podcast platform and on YouTube. And it's just been a blast. I, I love I love doing this. This is I, I was just speaking with my videographer who who I brought on board uh, not too long ago, and I was telling him I don't have a formal education, and so I was that kid, right? Just when in school when I went into class, teacher, can I go to the washroom? And I never came back. And so I think I knew at a very young age that school just wasn't going to be for me. And uh, I think I found my niche now uh, where I, I really like the camera. I like the mics. Uh, but uh, I also like sitting down and meeting with uh, investors specifically, but all obviously buyers and sellers. Gotcha. So, so that's what I, I want everyone. I hope they heard that. But his team is number three, right? So his team is number three. And because this is what, and the reason I want to bring that up is because I always get the like, I don't have a lot of time. And, and sometimes, right, like people get busy. I get that. But this is what, when people are telling me that, I'm looking, I'm like, I'm looking at their production. I'm like, nah, you got time, right? Like, yeah. you got time if you choose to, right? That's the thing is if you've chosen not to put the time into it, awesome. If that's you, do you. But don't, do not not put the time in it and then complain about, you know, not getting business or not going in there. So you've obviously, you, you, you guys are crushing it, you know, doing, doing a high amount of volume, but plus you've decided to build this whole media company essentially around your brand. So what, let, let me, let's take it back a little bit. What, what made you start when you said you started the podcast a year ago, what was the catalyst of you starting that podcast? Well, so we had a radio show um, here based out of Toronto that uh, uh, was syndicated right across uh, the country, uh, uh, AM640. And so we had that radio show for five years. And I knew that having the radio show opened up a lot of doors for us. But then radio just got very expensive. 
it also our listenership just dropped. Not everyone like there's less people listening to the radio. Yeah. Um, obviously with podcasts and, and YouTube. And so we needed to do something different. And I sat down and figured that I, I was listening to Gary V. And obviously I know you're a fan of him as well, Jason. And he 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 mentioned podcast. I didn't even know what a podcast was. And so I searched it up. I was like, oh, okay, this is kind of cool. Like all I have to do is is turn on a mic. I'm I've always been very comfortable on on phone calls, uh, just being in sales and service for coming up to about 25 years now. And I and, and I figured that, you know what, I'll turn on the mic and let's see what happens. It originally started to, to uh, it, it was originally for consumer facing how to, how to buy, sell and invest. After about 12, 13 episodes, I even got bored of telling people that you need a home inspector or this is how you get a mortgage. And it just wasn't authentic anymore. And so I sat back with my uh, executive producer and her and I uh, essentially whiteboarded and, and asked the question, hey, what really is my passion? And it's entrepreneurship. So I'm growing this team. Um, I, I, I have... Uh, again, that support staff of 10 core people that are with me on a regular basis. And I'm, I'm learning a lot about them and reverse engineering what they're going through, their lifestyle changes. So I wanted to document that as well as going back to not having a formal education. The one thing that I took very serious growing up was my personal education. So the Anthony Robbins, um, uh, 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 the, the, the John Maxwell's, the, the uh, Jack Canfield's of the world. I... It like consumed their content from a book perspective and audiobooks all the time. And so I also wanted people to essentially be a fly on the wall of me learning still. So now I sit down with a lot of people in entrepreneurship and real estate, but a lot of leaders, not only in our country, but right across the world. Um, and now a lot of people are, 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 are flies on the wall to those conversations. That, and that's great because that's one thing, especially now, um, you know, in, in our current culture, right? Especially down here. And I don't know what, it, I don't know what, how higher education is, is looked upon in Canada as far as like student loans and the value that you get from it. But down here, there's, there's, there's quite a conversation going on that. And, you know, I know so many people like yourself that, and that was a great way to put it as your personal education is to actually go in on yourself and, and, and you can get an education, not, you know, in a non-traditional sense by listening to the, the successful people and learning and using your brain to find out what worked for them and not, and not be like, okay, well, I'm going to do exactly that and I'll get the same results. But saying like, okay, I'll learn from what they're doing. Like with Gary Vee, like I don't want to do everything he's doing, but I want to take what he's doing as a tactic, see how, be self-aware of who I am, what I'm willing to put in where my strengths are, where my weaknesses are, and make that work for me to create my own version of that process or workflow, which it sounds like you, you've done as well. For sure, look, I, Tony Robbins always said, success leaves clues. Yeah. And so if you follow people that have done it, uh, what you want, like what you wanna do, there's already someone who's done it. It's just a matter of figuring out how they did it. And it just gets started is, is really, the best advice I can yeah. give someone. If it's wanting to get into uh, the mortgage business, the real estate business, the podcast, you want to start a podcast, you want to start content, just get started and then everything else will uh, uh, essentially fall into place. Because at one point I had, I worked with this mic right here. It's $75. The snowball. I, I, <laughs> I went to our staples and uh, yeah. um, I plugged it into a computer my executive producer who had no clue what she was doing, but she just wanted to be involved. She YouTubed how to put a podcast up on anchor at that time. We didn't even like now I use Lipson and yeah. we put it on iTunes for like two months. We couldn't figure it out. But over time, then we got like, now I got $500 mic setups. I got four <laughs> yeah. five mics in this room. I have, two videographers, I have a graphic designer, a copywriter, all full time. That took, that took time. And, yep. and now I'm taking it very serious. Yeah, no, and it's so true. And that's another thing is, is look, you know, I, I've said this on past podcasts before flash briefings, you guys have heard me, you know, content say this all the time. 
look, when everyone, everyone, for some reason, when they listen to a podcast, they listen to someone like you or like, you know, my man, Josh Pitts over there about, you know, cause we're on stage or we're doing podcasts, we're on videos and they're like, man, how did you get started? Like, and, and they hear it. And I'm sure by now people are just sick of hearing it when Jazz said like, oh, well just get started. But look what, sometimes that's the answer. Like get start. Don't look for anything more profound than doing it. I was in the same boat. Like Dustin had started his podcast before I did. And he was telling me about it and videos to watch and whatever. And at the time I was just like, in my own head, I'm like, you know what? Like, you know, I, I, as, as I usually do when I get into something, I, I get very analytical about it and I tend to overthink it and try to make it right for when I start. And then I decided to do it. And now that's kind of how I roll into every episode and everything that I do is just do it. Um, but it's true. Like that's the answer is just get started because you know what, if you wait around long enough to get it to where it's perfect, you've missed the boat or maybe podcasts aren't as, you know, they're right now, like you could get a lot of reach attention on podcasts, but you have to get started doing it. And, and so I, I will, I will ask you this question though, for someone other than the getting started, which obviously is the key of doing it, stop getting in your own way of doing it. What is one thing, what is one thing that you wish you knew then when you were going to start that over time you've experienced or now you have an expertise in what thing do you wish someone would have told you before you started podcasting that you know now that you didn't know that you you kind of mentioned it uh in your uh just before you asked the question jason when you said that you just roll into your episode yeah. um where the first probably the first full season which was about 17 episodes uh specifically uh, for the podcast, I had questions written down yeah. and that's just not who I am. Yep. It's not authentic to me. And for the last two seasons, I just literally roll into the podcast. I have one thought as I'm driving in yep. that morning about who I'm going to be speaking with. And then it's, then it's this man, like it, you and I just, just kind of rapping and going off, off the cuff it's going to play out a lot better because it's authentic. I don't have any notes in front of me. I have nothing. I'm, and when I'm, when I'm the host for my podcast and I have a guest, it's the same thing. I, I just started to look at it. I like vodka and water. That's my drink. And, and so I, I started to think about my podcast, like, Hey, if I'm just sitting in a bar with Jason, what would we be talking about? Like, yeah. We would, I would ask him some questions. He would probably throw something at me and we would just go back and forth, very conversational. And it took me, about 17 episodes to get to that point. Uh, I wish I had learned a little bit sooner. From a sales perspective, and I, I, I wasn't sure how you were framing the question, but from a sales perspective, the, the, the biggest tip I can give someone is when you're starting out, I know it, it's tough for you to think that if you can afford an assistant, mm -hmm. I, I actually think you can afford not to, like you have to have an assistant once you get started because what it allows you to do, in my opinion, is actually really do what matters in sales, which is just meet with people, help them buy, sell, and invest, whatever business it's, you're in. Yeah. And I wish I, got my, I wish I got an assistant a lot earlier than I ever did. You know, right now, Jason, like, I don't own a computer. I, I do everything from my phone. I, I mentioned to you the 650 transactions that we do on a yearly basis. I personally handle about 100 of them. Mm -hmm. And out of that hundred, I haven't been on our MLS system for like two, three years. Yeah. There's someone else who handles all that for me, right? All I focus on is when a client comes to my office, one-on-one -on -one meeting, yep. and it's that, you know, figuring out what we're going to, uh, what they need for their portfolio. And everyone else handles all the little intricacies and all the other details. Yeah. And, 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 as, and for, for all of those that are real estate agents and, and even loan officers, because this is something that we have a few that I have done, you know, on the mortgage side as well. But what Jazz is talking about is creating, creating an efficient team and, 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 and then utilizing the strengths, right? And that's what a lot of people get hung up on is that, especially when it comes to technology, is like, look, it's not, it's not very scalable, for jazz to do everything, right? Like, because then you're going to lose out on some business. The, the, what is scalable is getting like-minded individuals to join your team, um, expect perfection, right? Realize mistakes are going to happen, but have that expectations. Yeah. You know, you want quality people that are going to be an extension of your brand and then you build your machine. And when you do, things tend to work out. And, you know, it's, it's great hearing you talk about that, but understanding is like, look, 
everyone gets tripped over technology and innovation and, and, and everything that's going to disrupt them and, and replacing the agent. And it's like, look, it's what, if you look at what Jazz just mentioned and you look at an agent that needs to do everything, what do you think is going to last in the long term? That agent that isn't utilizing the technology and efficiencies, what that clients demand, honestly, in this day and age, or an yes. agent that does, right? And, you're, and you see the different results. So anyone listening to this that's thinking about the whole technology disruption, you know, conversation, everything else, like Jazz just mentioned, like, hey, I use all of that to my advantage. On top of that, I'm using human capital to extend my brand. And that's how you do it. And it, and it works. And because I'm not handling all the little, little details when it comes to every single sales transaction, it gives me time to do this. It gives me time to do the podcast. It gives me time to do the branding, which really excites me. Like that's actually my favorite part of the day. Um, yeah. And now my time is now split 50, 50. I think when I originally started this, I was like, you know, I'll probably put 10 to 15% of my time into the branding and the podcast and, and videos and content where now it, it really is 50 50 but they play they play hand in hand so much yeah. because now i know like when someone meets with me one of my clients will will come in a new client sorry will come into the office my like i don't have to talk about all the stuff that we've done yeah. they've essentially heard about at least one episode because yeah. that's part of our process before they meet with me they've already got an email with a couple of episodes depending yeah. on what we're going to be talking about. So I'm able to use the content a lot. Like it's not just for Instagram and, yeah. and LinkedIn and Facebook. I, I really found kind of the secret sauce and I'm, I'm in the process. I should really say that finding and how to use the content even more and more just on a daily basis. Yeah. And so, and, and again, for those listening at home and keeping track, that is a media company that sells real estate, right? Like that yeah. is, what we're talking about, people always say, well, what does that even mean? Now, everyone does it a little bit differently, but yes. you, just saw, you just saw an example of that. Like, that's how Jazz decided, like, that's how it's going to work. Now, and, and, now and, that's, and for those of you that haven't listened to Jazz's podcast or seen his videos, you've had some pretty, I would say, some pretty distinguished guests. And we, we were just talking before we recorded about one that's coming up. But, like, um, you've, had some, you've had some HGTV stars on there. I, I think you, I mean, who, who have you talked to? So I've had, um, whew, I've had uh, 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 the Bravo stars from Million Dollar Listing, yeah. uh, Ryan, yeah. Ryan Sirhan. I had uh, Josh Altman from LA. Uh, one of the episodes that I've recorded, but it's coming out in season four, is with uh, Tracy Tudor, who's also on uh, Million Dollar Listing LA. Um, who's just, who's just amazing. I can't wait for that episode to get out. Um, who else? I've had uh, uh, the president and CEO of Royal LePage, uh, which for us here in Canada is huge because it is Canada's largest organization, as I, as I mentioned earlier. And he's just, just an amazing, amazing guy. Very, very smart. I've uh, been the CEO for like 15 years now. Um, and to be a CEO of an organization of a little over 20, 18,000 realtors, but in terms of support staff and all that, there's about 20,000. And so to get his take on, on business and leadership was really amazing. Um, I had, uh, I've also had uh, the uh, owner of a Canada's, one of Canada's largest breweries, uh, Steam Whistle. Uh, and then I've had, you know, some really cool guests that are just starting out in entrepreneurship, Jason, that I really had, a, like, I have a lot of fun with that because they're just starting out. And so it's not, it's not the guys like Ryan Surhan, his team makes, they do $22 million in commissions. That's yeah. hard for the average person to fathom, yeah. right? Nor are their goals that large. But I also had somebody who started a clothing company here yeah. in Toronto. And he, he started this about a year ago. And we're sharing all the obstacles that he's going through, the ups and downs, all the no's that, he, that he's heard. Um, and, and so I, I like that a lot just as much as the big guests, because that to me is someone can listen to that and say, you know what, that, that, that's what I'm going through right now. Yeah, it's tough. I'm not making $22 million. <laughs> and, and, so, and so for the average person, I think it, there's more stickiness with those type of episodes. Um, there's, I've had so many other guests. I, I, the names elude me because I'm yeah. already on to the next season in my yeah. head. <laughs> I told you off air that I have the mayor of Toronto coming up. I'm very excited. Um, I have a, one of 
uh, the world's largest developers, but definitely in, in your guys' uh, country, their related uh, developments uh, who did uh, all of Hudson Yards yep. uh, in New York. I have them coming up in the next couple of weeks. I'm actually flying to New York next Monday to go meet with uh, the, the vice president of that company to sit down with him to discuss all things Manhattan development and, and, and what, what it took for that company to go from, you know, a small little development company to one of the world's largest now. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. And, and I'm, I'm glad you brought that up with, with guests because again, what I like to do with the audience is, is I always, every episode, I always in the back of my mind have all the, you know, the, um, um, the counterpoints to you should do this, but why this, or the, or basically the ROI, like, you know, sure. and you, you know, right. Everyone's got the ROI in the back of their head for this and that, but listen, like, like jazz, it's not just real estate, right? It, you know, he, like you said, he mentioned someone that's starting a clothing company at the end of the day, you just want attention on your brand, whatever that is. Now you obviously want good stuff. You want good content. Like, you know, you, you know yeah, I can just set someone on fire every day. As Phil likes to say, I can <laughs> set someone on fire and put them on Facebook. That's yeah. attention, but doesn't mean that's the right attention, right? Like right. getting stuff that, again, that people care about that content they're interested in and the branding comes along naturally. So I, I will ask you this because I know this is the question that everyone that's listening right now, We'll be like, okay, oh, we got it, the podcast, stuff like that. But what have you seen as far as people are going to want the ROI question? As far as doing your podcast since you started last year, um, how would you say that's helped your your brand and getting recognition um, of what you've done uh, since it, you started last year? It, yeah, um, it, and, and I didn't even see this coming this quick, to be honest with you, Jason. It's what's happened is when people walk into my office, so my office that I'm sitting in now is the podcast studio as well as my office. Yeah. Um, and so now when people come in here, I hear things like, oh, wow, this is where you shoot the podcast. I've been watching it. I've been learning a lot. And my, I've always been pretty, really, like, really good, and, I, and, and I'm not – and I'm trying to be the most humble. I'm trying to say that in the most humble way possible. I've been really good at sales before, but now it's um, it, it's become a lot easier. In all honesty, because I'm no longer selling, people are just kind of coming here and buying now because they've heard and or seen the content. Yeah. And so it's become one extra tool in the toolbox that I never expected this quickly. I thought it would take at least another four or five years. Um, I, I actually think that with some of my goals, I'm still on track in terms of, you know, the next four or five years. But what's happened in this first year is people used to come to me like this and now they come with open arms and they're ready to, to sit down and say, hey, Jazz, how do we how do we fit this in our portfolio or what? You know, we, we, we saw your podcast on how to sell a home because I teach people how to sell a home but without me all the time. Yeah. I tell them, look, you, or even more, what I've been doing a lot of in the last couple of months is begging people not to sell their homes because you can refinance it, pull up the equity and invest somewhere yeah. else. A funny thing happened. More people wanted to sell when I was telling them not to sell. <laughs> yeah. So I, it's like, it was just, it was just odd how that ended up working yeah. out. Um, but I think the biggest thing is Jason, really, it, it, it's how they come to me now, uh, how clients come to me now. It's, it's just different. Uh, I just have a little bit more credibility. Gotcha. Yeah. And that's, and that's again, absolute key. Um, so uh, we're running up on time and I want to be, you know, want to make sure that, you know, you're, you're back to getting back to creating content and crushing it. So uh, the last two things I will ask you as first question is if you could, you know, listening to an agent or a loan officer or a loan officer or agent that's listening to you right now, let's trust uh, chop it up about this stuff. What, what, what would be your best piece of advice to get them? Um, I would just start off doing what you're doing. Um, so are we talking like branding or are we talking sales? I would talk about, I would, let's just talk about branding. Like people that are like a lot of people that are, that are, are listening that they don't really come for me for like more like sales, even though if you have some advice, awesome, give it, but more of like, you know, more of like branding. They want to start getting branding. They want to start creating that media company. They want to start, yeah. you know, creating that, that, that memorable brand in their market. What piece of advice would you give them? So I would start off with looking at their inbox um, or their text messages and whatever questions they're getting from clients, um, which is at least one a day, at yep. least I would say, literally record the answer and just put it out there. Just that's the way that I would get started if I were to do this all over again without the whole 
team and everyone. And because the, what people are asking, everyone else is wondering the same question as well. They're just scared to ask it. So if you put it out there and you do it consistently and once a day, it's five minutes. It could be 30 seconds. If you do it consistently enough, you'll just become the person that is willing to give away the answers and give away the information for free. And more people just want to, will, will want to be in touch with you. Awesome. And then, and then, yeah, if you got, give, give us a, your best piece of sales advice. Yeah, look, I would say that you need to be, you, you need to meet with five people a day at least. And, and what I mean by that is, is just having a simple conversation. And it's, mm -hmm. hey, Jason, look, I'm in real estate. I'm not sure if you have a, a family realtor like you do a family doctor. But if you don't, I would like to be that person for you. And I'm not looking for you to buy, sell, or invest right now. If you ever need any real estate advice, can I be that person for you? Mm -hmm. And then I go quiet and I wait for your answer because you might say, well, dude, my best friend's a real estate agent. Great. That's okay. Now I know that you and I are not going to be, have that type of relationship. Yeah. But is, if you say yes, I need to have five of those a day and you build the foundation over, over years. So within like in real estate, I've been doing it for 15 years and I can tell you that I have a list of clients of about 5,000 that have said yes to me at some point. Yeah. And they not like they all do the business, do business with me, but the numbers don't lie. You generally do 10% of whatever list that you com communicate to through email, phone, social media. And our numbers are right there. We're a little above 10%. We're probably working closer to 12 to 15% a year, year over year. You need to build that community. And it starts with the question, Hey, can I be that family realtor? and do that five times a day. Awesome, awesome, that's great, man. And then lastly, how can they find all your content, man? Where, where do they go to connect with Jazz? So uh, to connect with me on Instagram, it's uh, jazztacker13, the number one three, it's my lucky number, and somebody else took Jazz Hacker. So it's jazztacker13 <laughs> on Instagram, and on YouTube, it's uh, youtube.com forward slash rec experience. Uh, and you can also use REC experience on any podcast platform. Awesome. And also you can find him on the industry syndicate.com. Highly sure. recommend you check out his content. One of the, one of the best things about what we've created with the syndicate is bringing people like jazz in that aren't just like, Hey, I read a book. I went to an Anthony Robbins conference and now I'm a personal life coach and all that stuff. He was in the trenches, did, did the work, decided to level up, got into all of this. He's a practitioner and he never forgot where he came from. He's continuing to do that. He's continuing the trenches, continuing to do the job. These are the people we want to bring in front of you because when it comes down to it, that is who you're going to learn for. Iron sharpens iron. It's what we are all about here at Shred Media and very happy to be part of the industry syndicate. So Jazz, again, my man, thank you very much. This was an awesome, awesome episode. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it, Jason. Awesome, man. All right. Well, this was episode 42 of Shred Media's Agent Marketer podcast. Uh, if you did not learn something from this episode, then you need to stop listening and go somewhere else because we just, you know, Jazz just kicked down some awesome, awesome nuggets of knowledge. And, uh, you know, I, you know, just you guys had to have learned something. If not, I don't know what's going on, but th there was some great <laughs> info here today. Uh, thank you again, Jazz. And hey, you out there, please give me, uh, if you guys could get a, a, get a chance, go to iTunes, give me a rating. You don't even have to leave a comment. It'd be awesome if you did. Uh, give us a rating, subscribe. And then also when you check out uh, the REC experience, do the same thing in iTunes. Give them, uh, give them some stars. Let them know how awesome his content is and learn something. Actually execute on the stuff that is in front of you. Uh, I am your host, Jason Frazier, and I hope you guys have an awesome day.